Um, at SFU, I've also worked at um, Cradle, um, which is a work in progress patient management system designed for remote areas with um, low connectivity. Yeah, um, so that's pretty much all about me. So let's see what we will build today. Um, as soon as my mouse works, there you go. Okay, so this is a preview of uh, what we will build. So basically um, creating a recipe application. Um, so users uh, type in their recipe a name and then they just press search and then we pop a new page up to show all the uh, recipe lists. And um, this is what we will learn today. So um, what is an activity uh, connecting UI to the code, uh, navigating between different activities, passing information between activities, um, how to import libraries into Gradle, uh, working with interface designer and then uh, making network calls. Okay, um, that's pretty much everything for the slides. So let's get started with, um, are you guys still able to see the desktop? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I don't see any complaints, so cool. Um, so, oh, there's a chat. Okay, um, so just to get started, um, just a disclaimer before we start. So um, we're gonna be going somewhat uh, really fast. Uh, well, not really fast, but somewhat fast. So if you cannot keep up, that's okay. Um, since we have this recorded for you. Okay, um, so let's create a new project. And um, for us, we just simply want an empty activity. We don't want any of the fancy stuff yet. So just click next, um, then just name your application. So I'm gonna be naming it my recipe app. And uh, the language we'll choose today is Java and then API 21, which will cover approximately 94.1% of the devices. And then just finish. Okay, um, Gradle will take a moment to sync initially. Um, let's see. Scanning index. Um, yeah, um, the, the reason we chose um, Java today um, is because most of the people are familiar with Java. Um, the other option would be Kotlin, which um, pretty much everybody with Android development like better, um, mostly because there's less overhead code. Um, there, it avoids uh, null point errors and it's basically easy to read. Okay, uh, let's just give a moment to Gradle. Almost there. Okay, yeah. So um, there's a lot to cover here, but uh, I'll just go over the main ones. Um, so the first thing is like the project structure. So uh, if you are following along and you don't see this sort of structure, um, you can click on this down arrow here and then, then choose Android. Um, if you choose project, it basically just shows you the whole structure and it can be hard to navigate. So Android is the best one here. Um, so the first uh, folder is the uh, manifest folder and the Android manifest is probably the most important file. So it basically tells the uh, Android operating system what the application has. Um, so what kind of permission it uses, um, how many activities, uh, what kind of services and pretty much everything related to the um, activity. So the next one is Java. So you go, uh, go Java and then this is your module name and then these are all your um, Java files. So this will include pretty much everything, all your activities, um, your model classes, your controllers and whatever you want. And then the next two ones are just for um, testing. So the first one, Android test, um, UI test. And the second one is for uh, the unit test. Okay, um, so the next one is the uh, resources folder. So in there you see Drawable. So this one holds all the um, XML shapes you create or um, uh, any of the um, background images or whatever kind of images you want. They will all go into Drawable. And then the layout will contain all your layouts um, for your activities, um, even like dialogue boxes or anything you need. Um, next up is uh, MipMap. So this one uh, basically just contains your um, application icon. And then we go down to values. Um, so values will have um, colors, um, strings, and theme. So color basically just all your colors in one place, um, string for all your strings in one place. So the reason to keep all your strings in one place is if tomorrow you wanna convert your app to some other languages, then you have all your string resources in one place and then you can easily just convert them and provide the new file to um, Android. 
And then this one is uh, basically your whole um, application stream. Okay. Um, so the next one is the build scripts. So Android uses Gradle for build. And there's basically just two build file you need to worry about. Um, so the first one is project. So this is for the um, build configuration for the um, entire app. Um, so the whole entire project. And um, the second one is for your specific module. So for example, that would for us, that would be this um, com.example.myrecipe app. And if you look into this, um, you'll see minimum SDK version, which we defined earlier, 21. Um, target, um, compile ones. Um, it also gives you the version code in case you wanna publish it to Google Play Store. And then it has a bunch of other uh, configuration options. Um, and then at the bottom, you see the uh, dependency list. So this is where we will be um, importing libraries into. Yeah, um, so that's everything for project structure. Uh, and then the next thing we're gonna look at is um, Android virtual machine, uh, not machine, sorry, uh, Android virtual devices. So. If you look at, uh, click on tools here and then go down to AVD manager. So over here, um, so you can create your uh, virtual devices to test your application. On. And if you don't have any over here, you just click on create a new virtual device. You basically pick your phone skin. So if you want a pixel four, go ahead and then click next. And then you choose the um, API level you want to test it with. I usually recommend uh, one uh, that's the minimum and then uh, minimum API your um, app supports. And then the other one is a uh, maximum one your APIs, uh, your app supports. But um, I'm not gonna create one today uh, since I already have like four of those, uh, but basically you just click next and then you just uh, configure it. Um, there's also advanced stuff here um, if you're into it. Um, yeah, and then at the end, once you're done, you just uh, finish uh, finish it. Okay, um, let's just cancel that one. And the next important thing for us would be the lockout. So this is where you view all your um, system log messages from your phone. So right now I don't have any devices running, so it won't show here, but basically you can filter it by um, device and then the app running on the devices over here and then different log um, levels. Um, so debug, info, warn, error, and then um, if you have your own custom locks, then you can just uh, filter it by the um, lock tags you provided. Okay, um, that's everything that we will require for now on the IDE. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these ones. Um, yeah, uh, let's just run our application right away. So I'm gonna run it on a pixel three, um, let's build it. So that's my Android virtual device over here. Um, let's see if I can show you guys some of the options. Okay, yeah, um, so you can emulate a lot of things here, right? Um, so you can emulate that location, um, cellular strength, battery, um, camera, phone, you can text the virtual device itself, um, microphones, fingerprints, a lot of stuff, um, virtual sensors. Yeah, so you, here you can emulate like sensors in case you're um, wanting to test out different, um, like some of the features like shake or whatnot, right? Um, yeah, and then you can also record it as well. So that's everything. Um, so the first time it does take a second to build and it's about to launch. Okay, um, so pretty much what we expected. Uh, it's just a simple hello world. Um, it's pretty static. There's nothing you can do on it um, except for press home. So let's stop this. Okay, um, so the first thing is the um, activities, right? Um, so what is an activity? It's basically a single screen user interface. Um, you can think of it like a single window on a desktop application. Um, yeah, um, so it has its own life cycles method as well. Like for example, on create is um, when you first create the application, you um, tell it what layout to use for us. It'll be our dot activity r.layout.activity underscore main. And then there's other functions as well. Um, the other common one is um, on destroy. So what happens when you um, destroy the application? So you can use this function if you wanna do any last minute like database save or anything other, uh, like if you don't want your um, uh, activity data to be lost basically. Um, so we don't need that today. And let's go to the layout and let's design our layout. Okay, um, so this is the activity underscore main, which is under um, layout over here. 
So this is the layout designer and it can be a bit overwhelming when you first look at it. Um, so the first thing you need to know is there's basically three ways you can um, do this. So the main one is um, the design one. Um, so where you just like do drag and dropping programming over here. The other one is just straight up um, XML coding. Um, so you just pair your, um, all your widgets and whatnot in here and then you constrain them through um, coding. And then the other one split where you can just like do a uh, mix and match of them. For today, we'll just stick to design because it's the easier one to get used to. Yeah, and it's as simple as just um, dragging anything from left to here. So you drag it here and then it'll be there. Yeah, um, so this is your palette over here. Um, it has all the different kind of widgets. So image view, recycler, text, um, and then you have different kind of um, input that you can take from user. Uh, different sort of buttons, um, different type of layouts. Um, so there's other kinds of layouts, right? We can use, um, so linear layout. So every view gets stacked like either vertically or horizontally. But the problem with those is like, you can have a really complicated hierarchy uh, if you just have like a linear, vertical linear layout inside a horizontal, inside a vertical, right? So um, we are going to avoid that. Um, okay, so let's see. For, for us, we'll use a constraint layout. So basically you're constraining um, different um, views to um, other views. Um, by views, I mean these uh, widgets, right? Like buttons, text views and whatnot. So um, let's go ahead and design our first page. So to design our first page, we need a nice background for our um, app. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy um, some of the, um, oh, let me find my background images. One second. Okay. Sorry, just trying to find my um, image. There you go. Okay. So to import a background image, you just go to resources um, under drawable, right click on it, and then just hit paste. And then it'll ask you which folder you want to put it in. So um, usually you want a most general one because you want it to be um, you want it to be visible to all the other APIs rather than just the uh, API number 24. So we're gonna put it over here and then press okay and then name it background. Okay, um, so that's our background image. And then this is our constraint layout. So this is the overall um, background for the main page. Um, so if you go to the attribute section and you just search up background and then you click on this tiny little cylinder on the side here um, and then just pick your background. Um, Android does provide some of its own backgrounds. Um, they're more for icons than um, whole background. So press okay. There you go. Um, yeah, so we have imported a, a nice background and then just delete this. So the next thing we want is a title for our application. Um, so let's drag a text view right in the middle. Um, so it's not very visible right now, it's pretty bad. Um, so let's see what we can do to fix it. So first um, under the attribute section, you wanna change the text to um, my, uh, you probably have a better name, my recipe app. Okay, um, so the next thing is to make it visible. If you go down to common, oh, there you go, common attributes. And, and so that's the text and I want it to be white and we wanna increase the text size to be uh, 36. So it's uh, very visible. Let's make it even more visible. Why make it bold? Um, okay, um, so here comes the constraining part. So right now they're not constrained. So as soon as you run your application, everything uh, here, like oh, by everything, I mean just the text view now, it's gonna go to the um, right-hand side over here. Um, so we need to constrain it. So to constrain it, you see these uh, blue circles just click on them and then just drag it to the left. So we are constraining it to the left and then we're constraining it to the right, which will make it um, come to the center, right? And then we also wanted to constrain it to the top and constrain it to the bottom again. So now it'll be all centerized, um, but we don't really want it to be centered. So now we can just um, drag it up and down. So I think right about here, I mean, not here. Right about here is a good place for it. Um, okay, 
So the next thing we need is uh, to take an user interface. So, uh, sorry, uh, take an user input. Um, so if you go to text and uh, plain text, then you just import it here. So over here, um, same problems, um, it's barely visible. Um, so let's see what we can do here. So if you look at search um, again here, background, and click on this cylinder again. Um, and then let's see if we can find something for edit text. Okay, uh, the first one. Okay, um, yeah, that seems better. So now we'll go down and see what we can do to about that text. So we don't really want some pre-existing text over there. It'd be pretty annoying for user to keep having to delete it every time. But we do want to know, we do want to tell the user what to what they can type in here. So um, maybe we'll give them a hint over here. So hint is under um, common attribute. So you just say um, type or not type, enter your recipe name here, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Um, the next thing is I think it'd be better to make it a single line, um, mostly because you don't want user to enter a whole paragraph in there. And then uh, let's make it in the middle. Okay, um, so now it's um, time to constrain it. So again, same thing, we're gonna constrain it to the left, constrain it to the right, and then, so that I always want it to appear below the um, recipe app, right, uh, the title. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna constrain the top to the bottom of the recipe, but that's still way too close than uh, what I want it to. So I'm gonna go to um, the, tr uh, not transform, sorry. Um, oh. I need to select it. There you go. So um, under layout, it says constrained widgets. So in the top, I want to leave about 16 um, uh, dp. So dp is the, uh, it's it's called density pixel. It's their unit of measurement um, for the screen. So let's, I think 16, uh, no, maybe two, four. Okay, 32 is, uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, and then you can see like the text is being cut off here. Um, so if I go in, there is like, the text is not all there. So um, what I'm gonna do here is under declare attributes, the layout width, it says um, wrap content. That means take only as much space as it's required. So I don't want that to be true. I want there to be um, matching it constraints. So fill the entire width for now. Okay, uh, so there you go. But that still kind of looks ugly. So maybe I'll leave some space on the left and the right. So let's say um, 32 here, 32 on the right. Okay. So that looks good. Um, so now, um, now imagine user has entered their recipe name. Now I need a button to press OK. So um, I'll drag a button down and uh, this one, I, I want it to be centered on the text view. So text here, text here, and then I want it to be under. Um, okay, uh, I only wanna leave about 16 DPS space in between them. And the other thing we can do is change it from button to search. Okay, um, that looks good, but this purplish color doesn't exactly match with our theme. So um, we're gonna search for background again. So for button, it's a bit different. Um, the background defines more kind of like a shape for the button and then background tint is like the color of the shape almost. So um, let's see if we can draw our own color here. Um, okay, um, yeah, that looks good. So. Yeah, these are a color picker. You can also pick from resources available to you. Um, you can pick different um, type of resources from. So project is just like the ones you have defined in your project. But for today, we'll use custom. Okay, um, that's good. And that's pretty much all we need from our first page. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. And installing. 
Okay, um, pretty much what we expected, except for this um, toolbar up top. Um, we weren't expecting that to be there. Um, and neither that um, purple status bar color up top. So um, let's see if we can get rid of it. So start the application. Um, and then if we go to um, your themes uh, under resources, uh, values, and then themes. So over here, you can see um, the parent for the theme is um, material component dot deny dot dark action bar. So by default, um, the theme is providing us with an action bar. So we don't want that. Um, let's see what we can do about it. Dot, uh, no action bar. Okay, we don't want any action bar. And then you have your color primary. Um, so it's like any view that uses a color by default will use the primary color. Um, primary color, uh, color primary variant. Um, so that one is the status bar color by default. So let's change that to be black. And then, yeah, let's try running our application again. Okay, um, yeah, so this is what we were expecting, right? Um, so no toolbars, uh, the status bar is all black. Um, and now if I enter pasta, so it does take in user input and everything, but um, once you click search, nothing happens. So probably because we haven't written any code inside the um, activity yet, right? So let's go ahead and um, do some coding now. So just get rid of this, get rid of this. Okay, so this is your activity cost, which is under uh, Java and then um, your module and then the activity. So in here, you can just um, find the button, right? So um, so if you just declare a variable called button, um, let's call it search button um, equals. And the way to find the views is just um, find view by ID and then R dot ID. And uh, we don't really know what the ID was for the button so let's go back to activity underscore main and let's change the ids for this so by default it was button two but that's not really descriptive so search search button factor um let's also change this one um so search added button oh added text there you go. Okay, uh, let's go find it. Um, so again, um, R dot ID. So the R stands for resources, and then these are different kind of resources you have, right? So you have all the IDs. Um, you can also have layouts, um, and there's like drawables and a one too many to list. So let's stick with ID dot okay, search button. So if you found our search button. And then the next thing is we also want to find our edit text. Um, search text equals um, find view by ID, r dot id dot um, edit search edit text. Okay, so we got both of the views. Um, so now uh, we want something to happen um, once the user press search. So let's for now create like a message on the screen um, displaying what the user has entered in the search box. So for that, um, just say search button dot set on click listener, and then you pass in new um, on click listener. So one of the nicer thing about Android Studio or IntelliJ just in general is the ability to autofill the code. I think whenever usually I um, program with Android Studio, it fills about half of my code for me. So you don't have to worry about like um, all these syntaxes and whatnot. So we are in here, um, let's say, um, so we want a message to show up on the screen once the user press entered. Um, so the message is called toast uh, in here. So you just say um, toast dot make text and then it wants um, contacts, right? So basically what a contacts is, it's, it's uh, access to the um, application environment and all the resources um, that your application has access to. So um, every activity has its own contacts. So for this one, we'll just pass in um, this activity's contacts. So we'll just say main activity dot this. Um, and then um, the string resources. Um, so this is the message that we need. Um, so let's see if we can uh, extract it from the search text. Search text dot 
get text dot to string. So that's our message. And then the duration, um, so there's two kind. So if you just do toes dot, so there's a short one and a long one. So let's just go with the short one dot show. Um, let's also say here, um, you entered. And so yeah, every time you press search, um, a message should pop up like this. So let's go ahead and play. And see. Okay, um, so if you say a pasta, and then let's get rid of that, search. So you can see at the bottom you've entered pasta. And then if you don't enter anything, so it's obviously not gonna show you anything up there. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, so so far we have done, um, we've just shown like um, how to show a message uh, once you click on the uh, button. So um, that's pretty boring. So um, we sort of wanna open a new page, um, new activity once the user has pressed search. Um, and in that activity, we wanna show all the results, right? So um, for that, we will need to create a new activity. So it's fairly simple to create a new activity. So you just right click um, on your module name. Um, so again, uh, module is under app, Java, and then the module name, and then right click new. Uh, we could create a new Java class and then inherit from activity, but there are built-in ones already. So go back to the gallery. Um, and then there's ac empty activity again. And then for this one, let's call it um, recipe list activity. And then um, always have this generated layout file for it, uh, which will auto generate the layout for the activity and then just finish. Okay, and then Gradle will take a second to get everything right. Yeah, um, so again, um, same idea as the main activity, you have the um, on create method and it tells you like we're using this one, this um, layout. So let's go to this layout here. So if you just control click it. Um, and then, yeah, uh, so this one doesn't even have like a hello text, nothing, um, it's just empty. So let's see what we can do about this. Um, so to, uh, so for now, we simply just want a button that will let us go back to the um, older activity um, for the search. So if you just import a button in and then you just, um, Again, um, same thing, constraint left, constraint right. And we want this one at the bottom. So we're just gonna constrain the bottom and we're gonna leave the top one alone. And then that's still way too at the bottom. So we're just gonna give them some um, space. So about 16 DP, good. Um, and then you just say, um, go back to search. There you go. So just a nice simple button saying go back to search. Again, uh, we wanna find this one in the um, activity. So we will give it a ID. So let's call it go back button. And then um, we go back to our activity here and uh, we're gonna go find that button. So the other thing is um, you don't always need to create a variable for like these uh, uh, views. You can just, um, if you don't need them again, like if you only need them for one thing, you can just do um, find view by ID or dot ID dot, uh, let's see, this one is go back button. And then you can just set on click listener there, then new on click. Okay, um, so, and this one, all we simply wanna do is we just wanna close this page and we wanna go back to the search page again. So um, for that, we'd need to um, kill the activity. Um, and um, the way Android uh, the way Android manages activity is if you open a new one on top of the previous one, it'll just stack it on top. So um, if you keep uh, destroying the activities, it'll just keep going back back until there's no activity left. And once there's no activity left, the app closes. So um, to kill the current activity, it's fairly simple. You just call this function called um, finish. And that should just take care of everything. Okay, um, so we have this activity where you press finish and then you can just go back to the search again. So now if you go back here, um, so we actually wanna go um, 
to the activity. So let's comment this. Oh, it's really hard with the big cursor actually. Um, there you go. Okay, let's just comment that out. Um, so you want a start activity. So it's just activity. And then this one takes an intent. So let's create an intent. Intent intent equals new um, intent. So what I intent is basically an action throughout your um, app. So um, right now the action is to start a new activity. Um, the action could also be to start a service, um, to start like your SMS app maybe, or in different kind of, basically um, any action you need to perform, uh, intent will be very useful for that. Um, right now, what we need to provide is just two things, where we are and where we wanna go, right? So right now we are at uh, main activity. And so we're gonna go do this. So we're gonna pass the main activity dot this. And then where do we wanna go? We wanna go to recipe activity. So recipe list activity dot class. Okay. Um, and then you just pass in the intent here. So this will start the um, this will start the new activity. But we don't really. We also want to pass some information along to the new activity. Um, so right now we just want to pass um, whatever the user has entered. So let's go ahead and pass some information. So intent dot put extra. So put extra is the um, word uh, function you use. Um, so you want to call it a query, um, and then you want to say search text dot get text dot to string. So you're just passing a simple string to the next activity and then you're just starting it. Um, so before we go to the next activity, we also wanna make sure that um, there is actually something in the search text. So, and if there's nothing, you don't really wanna go to the new activity. So let's do a if check here first. Uh, if um, search text dot get text dot to string if it's empty, um, we're just gonna make a post here and we're gonna tell the user, hey, you haven't entered anything. So let's get rid of this. And you entered uh, nothing, dot, dot, dot. And you just wanna return from here and you don't, yeah. So that should be good and then rid of this one up top here. So we are pretty much ready to start the activity. We started the activity and now imagine the second page pops up. So this one, the second activity. So over here, we wanna extract that method we just got, right? Um, so uh, remember the intent that, we, that was passed to this activity. So now we need to access that one um, and we need to extract the um, curry. So um, let's create a variable first, string curry equals this and then now um, let's see. Um, so you could just type in get intent that will give you the current intent. And then first we actually need to check if it has extra and you can do it like this and curry because if it doesn't have an extra and you try to get it, your application will crash or most likely return a null which could potentially make your app crash. Okay, so if it does have one, then you just do curry equals um, get intent dot get intent extra. Um, and then you just same thing here. And at the end, you just wanna toast it. So yeah, um, so first thing is you can't just paste code, you actually need to import the libraries. Um, so this one says press um, alt and enter. So alt enter. Um, so the other thing is like, we are telling it to use main activities um, context, but the um, but Android realized it's not main activity or end. So you need to pass in the right one, right? So let's say recipe list activity. And then obviously there's no variable call search text. Um, so we get rid of this. And then you can just say you enter query. So that should be good. Um, let's try running our application. So press play. Okay, um, so if again, um, if I, oh, those are emojis. 
Yeah, uh, so if you don't enter anything, you entered nothing. But if I enter pasta, search button, you've entered pasta. Um, and then again, simple button here, go back to search. Uh, the other thing is uh, this button here, color is um, well brown and this one is purple. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, so we can just go to the main activity. And uh, so if, if this becomes too confusing over here, like these are all your declared ones, um, you can also just always go back to the code um, and then just find it here. So edit button, um, this is the button. And then this is the background tent here, right? Uh, so we wanna copy that. Um, let's do this properly and um, make a color out of this one. So go to the color file, um, color, uh, name it brown. Um, there you go. Then just paste it here. And it's hex value, so there you go. And then um, the other thing we could do is we could make our app's primary color to be brown. So now the thing, uh, so now um, we don't actually, so let's see, let me just show you. Um, so if you go right click on it and then you go to go to XML, it'll go to that um, widget there. Uh, so we don't actually need this anymore because if you set our primary color is brown. So uh, Android by default, is just gonna implement that one. So just get rid of this and then if you go back here, uh, see it's still uh, the same color, but if we go to the um, the recipe activity, see the color also change over here. Okay, um, so that's uh, pretty much everything on how to navigate between um, activities. And uh, maybe let's take a five minute Q and A break here, uh, see if there's any questions. And if there's none, we can just keep continuing Um, Sean, are there any questions? Um, if you guys have any questions, you can pop it in the chat and we can answer it from there. Uh, as of now, we don't have any questions. Okay, uh, maybe just wait a minute for them to answer. Um, okay, we have questions. What API would we need from the side? Um, so, oh, um, I guess you're talking about the um, Spinacular. Um, so for that one, um, so basically you just sign up uh, once you log in and then it just creates, um, it just offers you a general API key and that's that's what we want. So later on, once we do um, networking stuff, um, you want you want to use that key. Otherwise you're just going to get a authorization error. So. Let's see if we can find that. So here is the um, here's the website for it, and then you just basically um, sign up, and then you get the API. Okay, um, I guess we can continue on from there. Uh, we have one more question. So uh, someone's asking, where did you assign brown to all buttons? Right, okay. Um, so I didn't, I didn't assign brown to the button, right? So what I did is um, I went to themes and I said brown is my primary color. So now um, every time you create a button, it will um, automatically assign it the brown color. So if I change this to be, um, what was the other color there? Uh, purple? Yeah, purple. So now it's light purple. Um, so if I go to activity main, see the color changes automatically to um, purple. So the themes right here uh, defines your overall um, uh, over, overall um, colors and like primary colors, secondary colors and just overall um, theme for the app. So um, if I change it to brown and now I can obviously go to individual activity and um, override the color there. But um, in this case, it, I don't need to do this every time um, I do it. And then it also makes your app a bit slow, right? Because Android by default is applying a primary color and then every time you're overriding it. So there's also a bit of a performance issues there too. 
Yeah, it's not only for button, it's just um, whatever uses the uh, primary. Um, the other question, how to get familiar with the various inbuilt function to use to get this thing done. The function you, the function you're using seems really new as a beginner. So um, how to know more about these functions. Um, so this is more about a tips on a hackathon. Um, so yeah, um, so a function like this one, right? Um, on click. So what if you don't know how, if there is an on click listener? So the way um, I've learned is, um, uh, so basically um, I had a, I had this idea in my head. Okay, I want, um, I want to create a button and I want it to click. And like, obviously I didn't know the functions at the time. So I just simply search up um, how to make a button click on, um, and then there's like uh, Android's documentation, which which will give you like a sample code and everything. So if you want to do something and you know, it should work like on a regular app, then you just need to search it and uh, there will be documentation for it. Um, and then other than that, um, if you want to just go through here. Uh, so for example, you could also just do search button. And then once you click dot, it'll give you um, all the extra buttons here. Um, and then, so for example, if you have this ad focusable and you don't know what this does, so you can also control click on this and um, go to the thing. And then there's a bit of document, uh, documentation over here as well. Okay. Um, cool. Um, I think that's everything. Is that all the questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is um, we want to do something more than just going back on the um, recipe list activity, right? Um, so what we want is a recycler view. Um, so let's go to the um, activity list. Uh, there's a go back button. And then um, under common, you'll also see a recycler view. Um, so recycler view is basically used to um, display a large list of data uh, that doesn't all just like fit in one screen. So uh, pretty much this is the one of the most common um, widget. Uh, pretty much every big app will use it. So social media apps use it um, to display all the different um, posts um, people make. Um, so like, you know, all those things you scroll through. So that's all through um, recycler view. Um, and it's like almost hard to see an app that doesn't have one of these. So let's go ahead and drag it down to the main screen. So um, same thing, right? Um, you constrain it to the top, um, you constrain it left, you constrain it right. And this one, um, I wanna constrain it um, on top of the button here. Um, so let's zoom in a bit. And because I, want, I don't want it to overshadow the button. So if you, oh, there you go. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, so if you're having trouble with this, so you can also just always go to um, XML. And if you know them by hand, you can just say over here. So for example, this one, um, so I already have end to end here, start to start, top to top. Uh, so the next one is bottom. So let's see, bottom and to the top of. And the other one I have is go back button. So now if you go to design, you'll see, you'll click on this. So see, there's like a line there, but it's still overshadowing it, right? Um, that's because under the height, we have it set up to match parent, which means it'll take up the entire screen, no matter what the constraint you set. So if you go click on this down, then you'll see zero DP match constraint. constraint. Click on that and same for the width. Okay, um, so now you have your recycler view. Let's also give it an ID. Um, I, I wasn't very descriptive with it because we only have one of those, so it should be easy to find. Um, so let's go over here. And let's go find that recycler view. So again, recycler view, recycler view equals find our dot ID dot recycler view, right? Um, okay. So um, to set up a recycler view, there are three different components. Um, one is model class. Um, second is the um, layout for the model class. Third is the adapter. So the model class is basically um, represents one single item in the list. 
Um, and similarly, the layout for the model class that represents one item, uh, one layout uh, in the view. And then the adapter is what connects the data to the view. So let's start off with the uh, model class. Um, so again, under Java, your module name, right click on this and say new, uh, and then you just want a Java class. And now let's call it recipe item. So it's just a simple model class. Um, it doesn't need to be very um, fancy or anything. So you just need uh, three variables in here. So you need um, title, image URL, um, and then you need an int ID. So um, right now I only have three variables. So um, I need to create a constructor. Um, so three is not bad, but once you have like five, six items, you need to um, put in a constructor. It can be tedious to do it manually. So um, in Android Studio, you can just right click on it. Um, and then you go to generate and then constructor. And then you can pick all of your um, variables and it'll create one for you. Um, same thing uh, we'll do, um, we'll go right click and we will do generate and we wanna generate a two string there, which uses all of those. Um, there you go, okay. So model class again, very simple. It just represents one single item in the list. Um, it's fairly easy. There's nothing more we need to do here. Um, but now next on the list is um, creating the, um, the layout, right? So if you go under resources, um, layout, right click on it, new layout resource file. And let's call it um, recipe underscore item underscore layout. So now we get to design this from scratch. Um, so our, our view is gonna be simple, right? Um, so each recipe is gonna have a, uh, a image of it and, uh, and a title, right? Um, so before importing this, I wanna import another um, image in the background. Um, let me see if I can find it. So this is just gonna be like a default picture for the, um, for the uh, recipes in case there is no pictures available, right? Um, so again, draw drawable, and then you just paste it. Press okay. And yeah, it'll just call it error. Um, Okay, so now you have the error picture. So now I'm gonna drag this in here and I'm gonna choose the error picture by default. So like this one here, um, you see like different images can have different um, size and we don't want that. So uh, we want this one to be fixed. So let's just do it 150 dp uh, with 150 dp height. Um, so that's good. And then uh, same thing, right? Um, constrain it to the left, constrain it to the top, and that should be enough for us. So the other thing is the title. So you put it down. And then title, you always want to constrain it to the um, image, left and the right. And you always want it because you always want it to appear in the middle and the top too. And then again, um, leave some space in the bottom of it. So there you go. And uh, same thing, right? Um, you want to give it an ID. So let's call it recipe image view. And once you click enter, then just refactor um, this one. Uh, recipe title, title view. Um, okay, so now let's just by default call it title. And again, it's not very readable, so Let's at least make it um, more um, black, I guess, color. Um, so it's now it's more readable, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, it's tiny, but it's readable. Um, if you want, you can also increase the font to be 18. Um, it should be okay. Um, it should be, it should look a lot more filling than just title uh, once we actually um, put the names in. So um, that's everything for the um, that's everything for the uh, the layout for the recipe item. So let's go back to our recipe list. So this one's done, and then next one is adapter, right? So now we need to connect that data to the view. Um, so 
if you go under Java, the module name, right click, new. Uh, so again, a Java class, let's call it recycler adapter. Press enter. Um, so before we actually create the adapter class, we need to create another um, subclass that will hold the, the layout view, right? So let's call it class um, view holder. Let's call it view holder and it'll extend from recycler view dot view holder. Yeah, and then enter. And now it'll be like, what's the error here? There's no default constructor available. I'll create it for us. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, so we got our class here. And now we can finally work on the main class. So this one is gonna extend from recycler view dot, uh, it's not a view holder, it's an adapter. And then it'll also take in a view holder, view holder. Okay. Um, and now declare abstract. So basically we need to implement all the uh, methods, all the necessary methods. So we're gonna do that like this. Um, so just right click on it and fix the error. There I go. Like I said, um, Android Studio basically fills up uh, half the code for you. Um, so in the view, um, the first thing you need is a, you need a list of um, recipe items. So you can uh, fill it up. Uh, you can fill up the view. Um, so let's call it items. And then you also need a constructor. So recycler adapter, and it takes in a re list of recipe items. Items. No, um, oh, that's the wrong one. There you go. This dot items equals items. There you go. Um, okay, and so it has three main functions. So the first one is on create view holder. So basically, this is where you um, generate the view uh, based on the layout you want to use, right? Um, so to create the view, we're just gonna call view view equals, and then we're gonna use um, this class called layout inflator dot um, from context. So we need context, right? Um, so every view has its own context as well. So parent dot get context, um, then dot, and then you wanna inflate the view um, r dot. So this time instead of IDs, we're gonna use layout dot um, and you want to use the recipe item layout and then pass in the parent view and then boolean attached to root so you want to you always want to attach it to the recycler view not the root root view um, and then you go this and then simply return a new v holder uh, and we just pass in the view here okay um, so that's good and the next step is on bind view holder. So we just created a view and now we need to um, actually connect the data, right? Um, so first, uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the current um, recipe item. So you just go recipe item, recipe item equals items dot get. And uh, the position is already passed into us, which is just position. Um, yeah, so you have the current items and now you need to, um, Remember the, in the uh, in the layout um, you have these two views. So now we need to get a hold of these two views. Um, so if we go to um, recipe item adapter, um, so the first one was um, text view. Oh. Text, not a text. Text view. Um, title. Title view equals. So you go to the holder. Um, it has only one item, which is the view we just created item view, and then you just do find view by ID inside that view. So r.id. recipe image view. There you go. Um, oh, that's an image view. So that will mostly crash because you're saying uh, my image view is a text view, which it is not. So be careful on mistakes like these. Um, text view. Oh, that is weird. Is there a title? Yeah, there you go, title view. Okay, um, the other thing is image view. Image view equals holder dot item view dot find by ID r dot ID dot 
recipe image view. Okay. Um, so now we set the um, items, uh, set the actual data, right? So we can do title view dot set text. And then we have our recipe item dot get text. Uh, oh, recipe item dot um, title. There you go. And then um, we also, at this point, we also need to set the current image of the um, recipe, but we don't really have anything. So let's just add it to do um, update image view later on. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much everything. So well, however many views you have inside them, you can just like inflate it here and then um, bind the data over here. So the next one is get item count. So this one basically tells um, recycle view on how many different views to create. So here it is just items dot size. Okay, um, so that should be everything. Um, so if we go back to recipe list, so now we have all three of these, right? Um, so let's get rid of this. Um, so you can do recycler views dot set adapter and then new recycler adapter, but it takes in a list of recipe item, which we don't have yet. So let's just create one manually for now. List of uh, recipe items, items equals new array list. Okay, um, for and i equals zero is 100 plus plus. Okay, um, so it's just items dot add a new recipe item. Um, title, um, we can just give it query for now. The ones we extracted um, from before right here. Um, so query, um, and then since you want each title to be unique, you also pass in the I at the point. Um, for image view, we don't have anything. So just leave it empty. And then um, for in, uh, the last one, which is the ID, you just pass in the I. So there you go. Okay, um, so now you just pass in the um, items. So now you have your recycler view, you also have the adapter. And one last thing to do is tell the recycler view on how to lay out the, um, uh, the view. So to lay out the view, you can just say um, layout manager new. Uh, for now, let's just stack it linearly vertically um, down. Uh, so linear layout, and then it'll just ask you a context. And the context can just be um, this one. So by this, it just means it's a shortcut for um, recipe list activity dot this. So there you go. Um, okay, so we should have um, recycle working recycler view. It just wouldn't have all the um, actual live data. So let's see if we get that. Okay, um, so let's search up pasta. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I love pasta. So let's see. Okay, uh, so something is there, but there's only just one view here. Um, so let's try scrolling it down. So, okay, there are views, but it's just one view per page, right? And the entire screen looks empty. Like there's absolutely nothing on the um, right-hand side here and it's just one view. So let's see where we went wrong. So stop the application. Um, and then let's go back to the uh, layouts. So under resources, layouts, and then let's go to the item layout. So this one is only, um, let's see, 150 DP, 150 DP. Cattle is not that long, but if you look at the constraint layout over here and you look at the attributes for it, it says um, width is match parent, um, layout height is uh, match parent. That means no matter what, it's gonna take up the entire screen. Um, so we don't want that. We want it to change to wrap content. So take only as much space as it needs. Okay, um, so now you have a concise view. Um, also the right-hand side was looking very empty. So if you go back to the recipe um, list, list activity, instead of a linear layout, we don't want 
this anymore. We want a grid layout. And again, pass in the contacts and then tell it how many columns. So for now, two is fine. Okay, um, so now if we hit play, Um, again, Tessa. There you go. Um, so you have all of them. So starting with zero all the way to 19 and this screen doesn't look empty at all now. Um, so pretty much what we wanted. Um, so the next thing we need to do is actually make those network calls and um, get our actual data. So just stop here. Um, okay, so the on create method, it's already looking like it's gonna get really full. So let's just extract these things here into a method of its own. So if you just select it all, right click and refactor, and then it will be extract method. And then let's just call it setup recycler. So there you go, um, set up recycler um, and takes in a string query. So that's good, um, which makes our um, on create function a bit shorter now. Um, so the next thing is um, setting up the, uh, making the uh, network call, sorry. So for that, um, we will need to um, import libraries. So by default, like, I mean, Android has its own library, its own ways of uh, making network call, but with that, you wanna be um, careful because now you have to manage uh, multi-threading. Um, so basically what happens is everything that you see, like updating all the UI and everything that's running on the main thread on Android. And uh, main thread is mostly responsible for um, updating the UI. So if you make a network call on a main thread, it's gonna keep waiting for that network call and it won't like update your UI or it won't take in any user interaction, which will make, uh, which will look like your application is lagging or worse, like it's just not responding at all. So um, during a hackathon, you don't, you don't really wanna go through all that trouble of doing all the work by yourself when other people have already done it. So if you go under Gradle um, for your module one, uh, so specific module, and then you go down to dependencies, um, so here, uh, let me see if I can go find and import the libraries that we have need. Uh, okay, got it. So control C. So these are the libraries that we're gonna be using. Um, I'll also paste them in chat. Um, just so that you guys have it and you guys don't have to copy it. Um, there you go. And then you just sync Gradle. So the first two, uh, the first two part of it, it it's for um, setting the image view. Um, so basically what it's gonna do is we're gonna give it an image URL and then it's gonna fetch the image and then it's gonna put it up in the image view. So otherwise you would have to make uh, another network call inside the, um, inside the recycler um, adapter, which can make it look pretty ugly. And the volley one, uh, so this one is basically just to make network calls. Um, Okay, so it looks like main activity. Um, so, oh, there's too many views here. So let's close all the others. Okay, um, so let's make a network call here, right? Um, so we wanna make a JSON request. So let's make JSON uh, object, oh, object request. An object request, and then now it recognizes. Oh, you want to use this one? Yes, we do. So we'll import it. Um, equals new JSON object request. Okay. Um, so certain things we'll need. Um, you so you already have the query, and then you need a URL. Um, so I already have the URL as well the ones we need. Um, let me just go ahead and find it. Okay, um, so this is the URL I'm using. Um, I'll also put it up on the, um, on the chat. So if, in case you guys are still following. Um, 
So yeah, uh, it's a pretty simple URL. So you have the HTTP stuff and then you have the API key here and then you have the query here. So we already have the query with us. So just get rid of that. And then you just attach um, the query at the end. Okay, um, for the API key, um, I already got mine. So I'm gonna use that one. Um, let's use this one, there you go. Then we got it. Okay, um, so so the first one it wants it wants like it wants to know what kind of um, request I'm making. So let's tell it we are making a get call. This is our URL, and we're not really passing in anything. Um, and then now we need a successful listener, right? So in case the request is success, so new new um, request our listener. God bless autofill. Uh, and then again, comma over here, and then you need an error listener. Okay. Um, and then at the end, once this is done, it's just, um, it is, uh, so you want to make a new request um, a queue. So volley dot new request queue, which just takes in the request dot add um, this. Oh. Not this, sorry. Um, we're gonna add our request. Okay. okay. So um, if it's an error, let's just log our error. Log .d. Um, we'll just call it data, comma, and then um, error dot to string. Um, if it's a successful one. So um, if it's a successful one, you still want to log it because we want to see what the data looks like. Data, um, data, comma, and then um, response dot to string, and you want to leave four spaces here. And then unhandle JSON exception. So try catch. Okay. Um, so if it's an error, you just want your manual data because we know a lot of things goes wrong during hackathon. So you want to have a backup plan. So um, just copy this here and that's it here. Set up recycler, let's pass it items. And then obviously we need to change this one. Oh, not the activity. Okay, uh, there you go. And then um, you wanna log it. So one last thing, right? Um, so we decided to use uh, internet in our app, but we haven't told um, we haven't told um, Android that we're gonna be using um, we're gonna be using uh, internet, right? Um, so for that, let's just see first why this is string in error. Yeah, let's just sure fix it. Okay, yeah. Um, so go to the manifest, um, and then over here, just autofill this, use this permission, and then the first one is internet. There you go, that should be good. Um, okay, let's go and play. So, um, the way it's set up is, um, nothing will show up if our request is, um, good, but, uh, we should get a log message here. So let's go ahead and search pasta. And once you make a search, there you go. So obviously we didn't call the setup recycler view here. So let's go ahead and analyze the data. So this is the JSON data we have. So it's just a JSON object with a, within a JSON array here. So let's extract our data out now. Um, so in here, you wanna get the JSON array equals, um, response dot get json array um, and the array is called results and let's close this oh. and in here obviously you want to json array here um, and then you want to convert it into um, recipe item items new array list 
Okay, um, so again, yeah, just a simple for loop to um, iterate through all the objects. So int i equals zero, i is less than json array dot size, oh, it's length, i uh, plus plus. Okay, um, so we wanna grab the um, current json object within that. Um, so um, that would be uh, json object object equals um, json array dot get json object which is index i and then you just simply um add in here dot add new recipe item um so oh it's actually gone from the bottom but um that's okay um uh, sort of remember this by head so you just get object dot get string. So the first one was title. The second one was object dot get string uh, image. And the third one was object dot get and um, call it ID. Okay, and then at the end, you just call setup recycler and then you just pass in the um, items. So if everything goes well, um, it should go in here and then just um, set up with the actual data. Uh, one last thing we forgot is we need to update our image view here. So go to recycler adapter. Um, um, let's see. So image view. Oh, no. So remember the um, a library we imported. So that was glide. So it's called glide dot with so we want it with image view dot load um, item recipe item dot image URL and you want to load it into um, image view again. So yeah, um, so if this library wasn't there, then um, we would have pretty much to do the same thing we did over here, recipe activity list, like this big chunk of code again. So let's go ahead and run it. Yeah, okay, do nothing. Um, hopefully we'll finally get those actual images. Voila. Okay, um, so there you go. So you have these um, images here with tuna, pasta with tuna, pasta margarita, and I'm hungry now. Okay, uh, so if you go back, and you search like um, Indian, and you search here, there you go. It should go back. And then if you search uh, pasta again, see how uh, images load up way faster? It's because um, Glide um, already keeps like a copy of it. And if it knows that you're making the same request, it'll just use a copy instead, which will save you um, time. So, um, yeah, um, that's pretty much everything for this um, introduction. So let's stop here. Um, yeah, um, that's pretty much everything. So do you guys have any questions? We still have about 10 minutes. But one question, uh, what is an API? Um, sorry, the, um, do you mean like the Android API version or um, do you mean like the API key we were using? Just in general? Yeah, okay. So um, basically API um, stands for um, application programming interface. So it's just an interface a framework could provide you. Um, so for example, um, the API we used was uh, from Spoonacular. So they have their own um, framework to get the, um, to um, 
get a list of like all the recipe and then they provide us, us an API that we can access all their um, data through. So for us, that was just that uh, URL that we were using. Um, for Android um, specific Android uh, version. So API versions, uh, these are like incremental and um, basically just with new API, it comes in um, new features that Android has implemented. And Jeffrey gracefully provided a API link. What is an API? Thank you. Any other questions? You can drop them in the chat. Also, I'll be there doing a hackathon. So um, if you guys need any help with it, um, I should be in the uh, mentor section. Um, okay, if we don't have any more questions, then uh, we can end the meeting here. We can end the workshop here. Um, thank you, Sachin, for um, having planning such a nice workshop for us. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants um, for attending the workshop. And I hope to see most of you at the hackathon. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. For sure. Uh, th thank you. Th like, I mean, thank you for just uh, giving me the opportunity. So this was actually my uh, first workshop. So thank you so much. Um, also, the uh, recording for today's workshop should drop on uh, our YouTube channel by Tuesday, I believe. So um, yeah, that's all for today.